never whistle at night. There's an old saying down in the south that you should never whistle at night. Many cultures from all around the world say such a thing. They all tell it a little differently, but the warning stands just the same. Whistling after dark draws the attention of evil spirits. Down south, they call them haints. And simply put, you don't ever want a haint's attention fixed on you. Benjamin knew this all too well, as his Grammy had told him as such. But nevertheless, he one day found himself in a pickle about it. Like many times before, Benjamin and his friends were out playing together in the woods. They normally made a point to get home before the sun began to set, but today they lost track of time. Before they knew it, the sky had turned orange and the forest was becoming dark around them. The boys finally noticed this and quickly began walking home, not wanting to get into trouble. As they walked, a boy named Robbie began whistling a little tune. Hearing this, Benjamin quickly shouted, Stop that, Robbie! It's nearly dark! The Haints will hear ya! Robbie immediately stopped, but Thomas started laughing loudly. Oh, don't tell me you actually believe those stories. Those are for babies. I'm serious. My Grammy says it's dangerous, Benjamin insisted. Robbie looked back and forth at the other boys nervously. Well, I say it's a bunch of hogwash, and I'll prove it to you, Thomas shouted. As the boys argued, the sun had gone down, and without realizing it, the forest around them had grown dark. Thomas was determined to prove his point, so, before Benjamin could stop him, he took a big breath and whistled a short tune. The sound seemed to echo strangely through the woods, and for a moment it sounded like all the other noise in the forest stopped. But after a moment, things went back to normal, and nothing seemed to happen. At this, Thomas smiled broadly and laughed at the others as they continued to walk home. Everything seemed normal for a little while, until there was suddenly a rustling and cracking noise in the forest behind the boys. They grew silent for a moment and looked around but nothing seemed out of place. At this point, both Benjamin and Robbie were growing nervous. Even Thomas was a little spooked, although he'd never tell the others. And so, they picked up their pace and walked a little faster. Again, there was a strange shifting sound and a cracking in the brush behind the boys. At this, Benjamin whispered, Look what you've done. A haint has come to find us. Haints ain't real. It's just a critter, Thomas shouted. Haint or critter, something is after us, Robbie cried. Thomas argued, but they still picked up their pace. A few moments later, Robbie gasped out loud. In the corner of his eye, he had seen something large shift behind a tree. He and Benjamin drew close to each other and began to shake with fear. I'm telling you, you've just gone and scared yourself silly. Quit whining about make-believe spooks, Thomas growled. Just up ahead, the forest got a little brighter. It was a small clearing where the light from the moon shone down. Benjamin and Robbie ran ahead into the clear clearing followed closely by Thomas. You shouldn't have whistled, Benjamin scolded. Yeah, it's coming to get us, Robbie wailed. I'm telling you, you're both being stupid. Whether it's a haint or a critter, I ain't afraid, Thomas puffed. I'll show you, he said, taking a step closer to the forest and drawing in another breath. Before the boys could stop him, Thomas whistled out into the forest once more. Again, 
It echoed eerily in, eerily through the air. The sound sent shivers up their spines. And again, after the whistle stopped, so did all the bugs in the forest. But this time, the sound didn't start again. It remained silent. Way too silent. Suddenly, Benjamin gasped and pointed a shaky finger towards somewhere deep in the woods. Out in the deep dark stood what looked like an enormous figure. They all stood silently for a moment, waiting for something to happen, but the figure did not move. Benjamin and Robbie were huddled together in fear, but Thomas still stood facing the forest. He was determined not to let himself be scared by children's stories. That's just some stuff off in the forest making shapes in the dark. There's nothing there, he said in a matter-of-fact tone. Taking one final deep breath, Thomas looked right at the figure and whistled. The forest remained eerily quiet. Not a bug or a frog could be heard. Not even the wind blew. The large figure stood perfectly still. Then, then, it whistled back. <laughs>